medieval Islamic scholars declared it a panacea for all medical ailments. In the 16th century, it became a profitable item of luxury. 18th century Quaker abolitionist William Fox denounced it, saying, For every pound used, we may be considered as consuming two ounces of human flesh. The Journey of Sugar Neither Short Nor Sweet since ancient times, encounters with the sweet taste of sugar have spurred global trade exchanges and an exploration of lands and technologies to produce sugar. People from varying social strata gained access to sugar and escalated its demand, leading to the deplorable practice of slavery. Exploring the history of sugar reveals a world transformed by mass migrations and widespread dietary changes linked to an inexorable demand for its sweetness. Human brains are geared towards calorie-dense, sweet-tasting foods as part of an inbuilt survival mechanism against starvation. Throughout ancient history, honey was the primary sweetener. However, around 8000 BC, the people of New Guinea encountered sugarcane, a tall grass that when chewed, released a burst of sweetness. Explorers from this region helped spread sugarcane to the Philippines and India around 6000 BC as part of their trade exchanges involving tools, arts, and crops. Evidence of sugar production in India appears in the 4th century BC document Arthashastra, a manual on statecraft which mentions sugarcane juice being processed into semi-solid sweeteners. Around 327 BC, military encounters with Alexander of Macedon led to the spread of sugar from India to his Hellenistic empires. Exchanged in small amounts as a medicine, Sugar soon sparked industries in Persia and Egypt. This is where it was encountered in the 7th century by the Arab Empire. Enamored by its sweetness and purported medicinal value, the Arabs explored ways of growing sugarcane in their Mediterranean territories. This period was marked by a technological exchange of ideas to improve irrigation techniques for sugarcane fields. The Arabs utilized the Persian Kanat, a series of water-carrying tunnels, and the Spanish water wheel to maximize sugar production. The rapid expansion of the Arab Empire led to sugar industries across the Mediterranean basin. The 11th century marked the beginning of the Crusades and the consequent spread of sugar to European nations. The Crusaders encountered sugarcane growing in the Levant. According to Albert von Aachen, a 12th century chronicler, it was on this sweet-tasting sugarcane that people sustained themselves during the sieges. European merchants eagerly cultivated sugarcane on lands won from Muslims. However, the Mediterranean sugar industry encountered setbacks due to an unfavorable growing climate, war, and the Black Death of the 14th century, which drastically reduced its labor force. Sugar remained an expensive item of luxury. Lavish sugar sculptures adorned the homes of the wealthy who coveted it. Eager to grow their own sugar, Spain and Portugal explored the Madeira and Canary Islands in the Northeast Atlantic in the 15th century. The climate there was better suited to growing sugarcane, and Atlantic sugar soon gained a stronghold in European markets. Crucial to the success of making sugar was the availability of a large workforce obtained by forced labor. The labor-intensive process involved sugarcane being painstakingly planted and harvested. The juice acquired after crushing the cane was then boiled and crystallized with precision to finally produce sugar. In the Middle Ages, this work was mainly done by peasant laborers or prisoners of war. The colonization of the Madeira Islands and Sao Tome by Portugal in the 15th century, however, promoted African slavery. The proximity of these islands to Western and Sub-Saharan Africa made it easier for Portuguese sugar traders to begin a slave trade that continued for centuries. When Christopher Columbus encountered the Caribbean islands in 1492, a route to explore a whole new world opened up. He brought sugarcane there on his second voyage, as he realized the land was ideal for such a crop. Sugarcane was part of the Columbian Exchange, a period which witnessed an extensive exchange of animals, plants, and diseases between the Americas and Afro-Eurasia. Exploration of the New World led to Portugal establishing the largest sugar industry of the time in their colony of Brazil by 1540, for which the Atlantic slave trade provided cheap labor. The New World encounter in the 1600s saw the creation of English, Dutch, and French colonies in the Caribbean, 
for the lucrative trade in cash crops such as tobacco, cotton, and sugarcane. This marked the start of the infamous Atlantic Triangular Trade Exchange of slaves, raw materials, and manufactured goods between the Americas, Europe, and Africa, where millions of Africans were captured and sold as slaves. Working conditions, particularly in parts of the Caribbean where sugar was being grown, were very harsh. Adjusting to the climate was difficult. It created this vicious cycle where when laborers died, they had to be replaced. So one of the reasons that we see roughly 9 to 11 million enslaved Africans making the middle passage from Africa to the Caribbean is simply that the loss of life was so high that laborers continually needed to be replaced. So the British and the French Caribbean, 2.7 million people brought there between the middle of the 1600s uh, and about the 1830s or the 1840s. The British Caribbean colony of Barbados was transformed into a phenomenal sugar industry due to its rich volcanic soil and easy maritime access. Hordes of indentured Irish laborers driven from their land formed the workforce initially. Rising costs of labor got Britain involved in the African slave trade. Laborers in sugar colonies encountered exhausting work and brutal treatment. Slave labor was instrumental in the success of the sugar industry, a fact that is not often mentioned. It is in fact the, the, the traumatic side, the side that people don't want to talk about, but a side without which sugar would not have become the major mass consumption product that it did become by the 18th century. Thus, British sugar became affordable to the working class as well. Sugar enhanced the taste of other foods and increased their consumption. Coffee and tea became more popular with the addition of sugar, and soon, drinking tea became an English national habit while alehouses were exchanged for coffee houses throughout Europe. In 1791, Britain encountered growing protests against the slave trade. Slave sugar boycotts gained momentum, forcing Britain to finally abolish slavery in its colonies in 1833. However, the popularity of sugar remained undiminished. Even when enslaved Africans could no longer be forced to work when slavery was abolished in the British Empire, in the period of the 1830s all the way up until World War I in 1917, about 538,000 indentured Indian contract laborers came in as the next wave of cheap labor. Sugar completely changed the demographics of these lands through mass migrations. During the 1800s, sugar served as a fuel for the Industrial Revolution. Workers consumed tea and coffee, sweetened with sugar, to get an energy boost before their long hours in factories. The early 1800s also witnessed the widespread production of beet sugar, which was initiated in France under Napoleon's rule. The Haitian Revolution in the French colony of Saint-Domingue and a trade embargo with Britain during the Napoleonic Wars had ended the supply of West Indian cane sugar to France. Hence, Napoleon encouraged exploration into beet sugar technology to meet the pressing demand for sugar. This allowed sugar to become cheaper and accessible to people of all classes. Sweetened jam and bread became a staple of the common man's diet. Um, for the poor in the 19th century, a lot of their calorific intake came from sugar. There was no vitamins there, it's just sugar. And malnutrition among the poorer classes at the end of the 19th century was awful. In the 1900s, mechanization of the sugar industry led to an excessive production of both cane and beet sugar. The surge in sugar production brought the candy business into prominence, and chocolate became a highly popular confection. The food industry used the popularity and low price of sugar to its advantage. Everybody wants to sell just a bit more. How do you get that immediate increase in acceptance? Those in the know realize you can add a little sugar. This practice by food corporations has led to sugar being encountered in nearly all processed foods today, leading to an increasing intake of sugar. The journey of sugar from rare commodity to everyday product shows how encounters with its sweetness propelled global trade exchanges. Exploration of lands and technologies to produce it allowed its access to people of all classes. Persistent demand contributed to the heinous practice of slavery, mass migrations, and widespread dietary changes. We live in a world where the ubiquitous presence of sugar is the result of a never-ending clamor for its sweetness throughout history.